I just think it's so scary how how because we have to assimilate so much, it's putting our lives at risk. Because it's like, it's not just hair. It's not just hair if it's killing us. It's not just hair if, if, we're, if we can't get jobs. Sometimes it don't make no sense. Does it really have to? There is nothing I can Hi, welcome to Maya's world. Hi everyone. So I don't know if you guys know this, but I wear glasses. I just like never wear it for any of my videos. But today I really wanted to get something off my chest and I didn't want to spend all this time putting on contact lenses, doing like extravagant makeup. I just wanted to say what is on my mind. So there's a study that came out um, a couple days ago and the caption says hair straightening chemical products linked to increasing uterine cancer risk in new studies so when they say hair straightening chemicals um i i call it perms i guess technically the correct term is a relaxer but they're saying that they've had a new study found about how perms slash relaxers chemical straighteners is increasing the risk of black people having uterine cancer. Sorry, uter uterine, my bad child. Uterine, uterine, bloop, bloop, bloop. So when I saw this study, the first thing that came to my mind was like, okay, none of this is new, but it was really affecting me. Like somehow reading this has been really, really affecting me. And I'm trying to unpack why, I guess we're going to unpack why together. So I've known already, we've been known that perms are bad for you just in a short term. Like there's been, you know, it's not, it's not new. 10 years ago, they found that out, you know, when Chris Rock, who we don't stand here, but when Chris Rock made good hair, he had mentioned it in that, in that documentary as well. But something about reading it like this really moved me. And I guess it's because I realized how badly I have been gaslit. And I'm sure you all have been gaslit. Because I had just, I made a video prior, which if y'all have shown that video, love, thank you. I'm, I really like hearing you all talk about your hair experiences. But I was talking about how the, a lot of the girls that were on the perm boxes admit that they never had a perm and that they were just either wearing extensions or their hair was just blown out and curled with extensions. How they did not use those perm boxes, but we were all made to believe that if you buy this product, you get this result. So seeing the study come out felt also like another layer of deception that has happened people were saying like oh there needs to be a lawsuit out ha 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 kiki kiki ki. but after seeing this study like it really makes me wonder what does compensation look like at the amount of lies we were told the reason i feel gaslit is because people often say to me it's just hair like anytime i make a video where i talk about you know, texturism, or I make a video talk about colorism or the intersections of both, there's always going to be somebody in the comments saying it's just hair. And when I saw this, this um, new study came out, it reminded me that it isn't just hair. But, but saying it's just hair is a way to really diminish and downplay the severities of this because a lot of black people have not been able to wear our natural hair in the workplace. A lot of us felt pressured or were forced to wear our hair chemically straightened because we were told because there were there are laws that have that give companies the right to discriminate against us for having our natural hair so there are laws that discriminate against us for having our natural hair in terms of it not being straightened the only option if you're wanting to have a job for a lot of people was to get a perm but now you're telling me this perm not only can can harm us, can shorten our life, can give us u uterine cancer, but it can also affect how we have kids. And something I thought about was like, I just know hella black people who have fibroids, who have issues with their cervix, people who, and so it makes me really, and I know, you know, personally, everybody I know who has fibroids, I only know black people who have fibroids. 
So I always associated it with blackness, but I was never really putting together like what could be leading up to these things. But now a study is wanting to come out saying that there's a link. It just makes me so like, because it's like, it's not just hair. It's not just hair if it's killing us. It's not just hair if if we're if we can't get jobs. I don't see I don't see no one else but black people coming out talking about how they've had perms and the ways that is affecting us or the ways that we have fear for our lives. That is a very uniquely black experience that people wanted to make it seem like we were overreacting. So when we talk about the deceptions that happen in the natural hair movement, it is serious. Because some people acted like the natural hair movement was just a way for them to come up, get a check, and keep it pushing. But every time somebody's coming up on these things, it's adding lies to an industry that has already been lied to. And that's why I feel angry about this whole thing, is because we are in industries that we are constantly lied to. And there's no compensation. Like, I wish we could do a class, a class, a law, like, we could all be compensated but I really doubt it. I don't know if y'all are lawyers in here and you guys are like, you know what? Let's mobilize. Let me know. And talk about a long game, a prolonged suffering, a prolonged struggle. And I felt like in my last video, I think somehow in my mind, because I know so many people who, I know so many people who still get perms. I think somehow in my mind, I tried to make it th seem like, oh, it's not that bad. It's like, it's, it's okay. It's the same as, I don't know, maybe doing some other kind of risky thing, but with everything coming out, it is that bad. Yeah, it is that bad. And I I don't know, like, people who still do it, I just think it's so scary how, how because we have to assimilate so much, it's putting our lives at risk. And I don't even blame the people who do it because, I like, I spent... Um, I lived in Nigeria for a year this past year. And something that's really normalized in Nigeria, like super normalized, is skin bleaching, skin whitening products. Everyone's just, it's real normalized. And at first, I'm thinking to myself, this is terrible. Like, why is this so normal? But then it, I had a moment in myself where I realized that unless people are as aggressive to demonizing colorism, I can't demonize people who are using a product to survive because the reason that people are bleaching and whitening their skin is because they need to survive. The same reason that someone who's perming their hair is perming their hair is because they're trying to survive. We both know what happens at the intersections between misogyny and blackness. It is not good if you are affected by misogyny and you are a black person, it's a really, really bad place to be. We all know this. So what people do when you're in an oppressed class to feel fine, feel good, feel beautiful, I actually pretty much don't knock it. But I do look to us to say, what, what now? What, how can we rebuild? Like, how can we realign ourselves and create a new image um, within having natural hair that for future generations, they don't feel the need to have to do these things because, and, and on, an, on another end, I'm like, what can we do about these companies that have lied to us and sold us things that's hurting us and the potential of anybody who has, if anybody who has a womb and they want to continue to have kids, this can affect us. We are all affected. I perm my hair. I'm sure most of y'all who are watching my video have either permed their hair or had somebody close to them that perms their hair. This thing is setting us up for failure. And then I'll talk about my own experience. Something that I was really thinking about recently is I, um, I went to Clark Atlanta University, which is a historically black university in Atlanta. While I was attending Clark Atlanta University, I decided to major in business my freshman year. So... To be a part of the business school, the one of the rules is that you are not allowed to have locks. You could not study business at a historically black university if you had locks. 
So when people signed up and they found that out, I remember people were either A, leaving the program, or B, I remember seeing someone, a black boy in my program, who was crying while they were shaving. Not the, not the school was shaving his head, but he went to get his locks cut that he'd been growing for since he was a kid. And I say that all to say that when we talk about perms and the way it affects us, it's not even just an individual problem that's going on in the U.S. This is a global thing, right? Because I also read about how some people, a Rastafarian student in Jamaica couldn't go to school if they didn't cut their dreadlocks. I know in Nigeria, they demonize people who have dreadlocks. There's a lot of jobs you can't get if you have dreadlocks. So all of these things are linked in our black experience in the fact that blackness is demonized. And that's why I really think it's important to look at anti-blackness as a system, because when you look at a system, you see that it's not unique to just us. So I say that to say about the Clark Atlanta that I went to a school where I knew that assimilation was the only way forward, right? Because even if, even though I wasn't one of those people who had to shave my locks, it said a message in my head that if I wanted to feel like, if, if you want to aspire towards whatever greatness looks like in this academic world or professional world, you have to remove a part of yourself to be there. And that's what straight, like, that's what is like the issue is like, we literally tell black people like who we are is not enough. And it just really makes me so sad because I don't know. I don't know. It's really sad. It's really sad. I'm really looking towards people who have natural hair, 4C hair, and the envisions of what I think a new natural hair movement could look like in a way that empowers those who are the most affected by systematic oppressions. I really look for people who are 4C, uh, dark skin, fat, all of the intersections that were really hidden within the natural hair movement, I really hope that in the next revivalization, these people are at the forefront and the showing of how, like, I really pray people stop taking a check. I really pray people stop taking a check for, for to sell out on talking about your hair and to lie on your hair, like, is embracing the fact that you can have your natural hair, you can adorn yourself, and it doesn't have to be a 14-step process, and it doesn't have to be really expensive. Yeah, like, that is really, really what I hope for. But yeah, I mean, I know that this isn't new information, but like I said, it still hurts nonetheless, and it feels linked to the last one because we just stay getting lied to, and I'm very tired of it. And like I said, I don't blame... I, you know, I'm not blaming the individual. I'm looking at it as a system. So I don't blame the girls in the perm boxes. I don't blame people who perm their hair. I have people I care about deeply who perm their hair or straighten their hair or are scared to wear their natural hair. And I get it. Because if someone can still write under my videos talking about go get your hair done, and I already know what that means. I know that people who have my kind of hair texture, if you're truly 4C and your hair locks naturally and you've been fighting against it, I really, I really feel for you. Because black hair has just brought out so much, we have so much pain around it and I really feel for all of us. So I hope you guys are getting softness this week. I hope that you are taking care of yourself amidst all of these kind of information because I think more things will start coming out. You know how it is. They'll never tell you how things affect you in the real time. It's only in post that they're going to tell you. Like, I can't wait for people to find out that vaping is on the same caliber as smoking cigarettes. But I ain't even trying to go on that path. But I just know that certain things that we think is normal is really not normal. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.